Hi friends, good morning. Last week we talked about whether or not we have enough water here on the north shore of Lake Chapala in Ajijic, Jalisco, Mexico, and whether or not we're going to have enough water in the future. That was last week. This week we're going to talk about whether or not you ought to drink it. You know, the most common advice people get when they're going to visit Mexico is don't drink the water. But we have to drink water. Water is the most important thing. It's more important than money or love or even food. You got no money, you're going to survive. Millions of people do. No love, that's terrible. Got no food, you're good for 40 to 90 days. No water? You're dead. You know, I tested the water uh, here about a year ago with a test kit. And I tested lake water and my bottled water that I buy and the water out of my faucet. I even tested my neighbor's water. They have a purification system. Um, and if you want to see that video about me testing the water, I used a water test kit like this. It's got a hundred strips in there that you dip in the water like litmus paper, and then you compare it to the color chart here. And it tells you um, whether or not you've got all of these minerals and impurities in the water. And again, I'll put that uh, video available to you at the end of this video. But one of the things that I... Um, didn't have confidence in with regard to this was testing for uh, organic materials like bacteria and amoebas and cysts. It does have two bacterial tests. It's got a hundred litmus paper tests for all the minerals and things, but only two bacterial tests and it takes three days. You got to get some of the water and put this stuff in it and then see if something grows. So I was disappointed that it didn't have more uh, bacterial tests. Because if you're testing for minerals and those kinds of chemical impurities in your water, uh, that's important. But those are the kinds of things, like if you drink uh, mercury in your water over the course of years, it's going to give you problems. But if you have inorganic those are inorganic uh, contaminants. If you have organic contaminants like amoebas or uh, parasites or bacteria or cysts, those things can get you in a matter of days. And so I have been looking for something that would uh, test for organic materials in the water, not just all of the mineral and chemical uh, contaminants. And I found it. Uh, it's called the CAC Toily Drinking Water Tester. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. I found this on the internet and I contacted the company and I said, hey, I live in Mexico and uh, we're not supposed to drink the water here. I'd like to know if my water is good to drink or not. So I said, could you send me a drinking water tester? And they did. <laughs> so that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, the organic stuff will get you quick. The mineral stuff, that's important, but the organic stuff, that's why they call it a drinking water tester and not just a water test kit because it tests for drinking water and whether or not it's safe to drink. That's what I wanted. Well, we're going to do some tests, but first, uh, I'm curious to know, how does it work? So I did my research. As you watch my, watch my videos when I'm reviewing something, you know that uh, I'm going to not just take it at face value. I'm going to see if I can understand how it works. And uh, I want to 
uh, have it proven to me that there's some scientific and real, honest to goodness, basis for me telling me, this thing telling me that the water is safe to drink. I'm not going to... I'm, I'm, I'm not going to take at face value what some company says, oh, yeah, this is what it does. I want to know how it does it, why it does it, and if it does it good. So let's talk about that for a minute. On the back of this thing, it gives the water quality scoring. It's a bunch of numbers. And the parameters that it tests for. COD, TOC, TDS, UV275, EC, and T. Well, I know what EC stands for. That's electrical connectivity or conductivity. And T, that's temperature. But COD, TOC, and TDS? What the heck is that? I'm going to read some of this for you. <coughs> because some of it's technical. And... There's some big words like biochemical oxygen demand, aerobic microorganisms, and molecular oxygen. COD, chemical oxygen demand. Why do you test for that and what is it? Water with high COD typically contains high levels of decaying plant matter, human waste, or industrial effluent. It measures the amount of oxygen needed for microorganisms like bacteria to live, die, and decay. So, COD, chemical oxygen demand. It finds out if there's bacteria and stuff in there. Next one, TOC, total organic carbon. TOC analysis has been used to determine water purification levels for decades in the pharmaceutical, semiconductor, and power generation industries because you don't want bad stuff in your water in industry. So I tried to read about uh, organic carbon and what is it. It's created in the decomposition of organic matter when hydrogen combines with carbon dioxide, and all of that made my head spin. So if we're not going to get a degree in organic chemistry, all we really need to know is that TOC is bad stuff and you don't want it in your drinking water, and this thing will give you a red light if there's too much of it. Next one. Total dissolved solids, TDS. Total, di bu 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 total dissolved solids is the total amount of solids dissolved in the water, including soluble hydrogen, carbon, carbonate items. Wow. Like I said, big words. Including soluble hydrogen carbonate ions. Chloride salts, sulfates, calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, volatile solids, and non-volatile solids. Its concentration will affect drinking water. A way to measure it is to filter the water sample, uh, 0.45 UM. UM is microns, I think. Dry the solution at the temperature of 103 degrees centigrade to 105 degrees centigrade, and then weigh the remaining residuals. But if you got this thing, all you have to do is stick it in the water, push the button, and then you don't even have to check the numbers on the back. All you have to do is get a red light, yellow light, blue light, green light, and then you drink it or you don't. Sounds like a good idea to me. This is a highly scientific instrument. I don't know if that's going to focus on there, but you get all of these different parameters and all of the numbers that go with all of the different things that it tests for. And if you're a scientist and you're interested in all of those numbers, this is your friend. But I just want to know if I'm poisoning myself or not. I'm happy with the red light, green light, and whether or not I'm going to drink the water or not drink the water. But I did find a whole bunch of tests interesting. 
I tested a whole bunch of different bottled waters available here in Mexico. Let's go do that. Let's go get some lake water. Well, we've got all of these waters to test. First step is take the cover off, push the on button, stick it in the distilled water to calibrate. Now, I got this at the local pharmacy. It's laboratory grade agua distillata, distilled water. And that gives us, there we go. 100% successful. That gives us a baseline for testing the rest of them by comparison to really pure water. The first one we're going to do is Vitawa. Now it says on there that this is osmosis inversa, which is reversed os reverse osmosis in Spanish. Let's push that in there, push the M button, wait for the numbers. 98% pure, and I've already done this and written that down, so that's how easy it is. Now, dry it off, and push the M button, put it in the next water, push the button, get the numbers, 97%. Now the COD is 0.4, the TOC is 0.5, the TDS is 22. Push the on button and you get some more numbers. 0.39 for that, 0.52. It's uh, electrical conductivity 43, temperature 24 degrees centigrade. And again, the percentage Press that again, 97% excellent for the aquafil water. Now I've done this, I've done this for all of these already. Seal, made by Coca-Cola, 98% pure. E-Puro, made by uh, Pepsi-Cola, 100%. That one was the winner out of all the bottled waters except for the distilled water. Now, let's zoom in a little bit here because I love doing the rain and the Lake Chapala. Okay, press the button, stick it in the rain water, wait for the numbers. Oh, it turned red. The score is 37%. That's poor. <laughs> Dry it off. 37% for the rainwater. Wonder what's the rain hitting on the way down. Uh, I don't know. Might have been some dust blew into the glass I set out there by the pool last night. Okay, press the button. Stick it in the lake water. Press the button again. Ooh! Red again, of course. Don't drink the lake water. 26 is the score. 26%. Okay, don't drink the lake water. And the next one is my uh, Garafon, the blue big 19 liter, five gallon water bottle that we buy. Press the button, stick it in the water, press the button, 
Ooh, good. 99%. Excellent. That makes me happy. And the next one is my kitchen faucet. Just ran it right out of the tap. Stick it in the water. Press the button. Get the numbers. Ooh. It's good. It's not excellent. It's good. It's 87%. Well, bottom line, don't drink the lake water. Don't drink the rain water. Don't worry about the bottled water. Don't drink out of your sink and buy bottled water. Well, none of these tests today are going to change my drinking water habits here at my home in Mexico. But I am going to take this thing to the RV when I go to Arizona in a month or so. And I'm very curious to know what's going on with my fresh water tank in the RV when I'm not there. Who knows what's growing? Or even when I am there, who knows what's growing in it? And I have filters, and I've tested it with those strips for contaminants, but real curious to know about organic stuff going on in my RV water tank. Now, if you're camping and you boil water even, check it out. Hey, links below if you want to get one of these yourself. Thanks for watching me today like me give me one of those thumbs up and please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next please share me with your friends on social media thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today